Now we're going to discuss distance devices or telescopes. These are handheld telescopes. The top telescope and the bottom telescope are in fact, in fact the same one or the same type. The difference is that the bottom telescope is, is focused out and it just gives you some appreciation for how much focus you can get out of it. It's about 20% longer than the top telescope which is um, kind of focused all the way in. Now, um, telescopes are used primarily for distance viewing. Uh, people use them for things like uh, bus numbers, looking at um, uh, street signs, uh, watching uh, sporting events, watching your grandchildren playing sporting events, or watching their boyfriends or girlfriends on the basketball team. Um, you can use them for bird watching. You can um, use them for watching TV even. Anything that's about 10 feet or farther away, it can be used with a handheld telescope. Now, one of the biggest disadvantages of a handheld telescope is the field of view. And you might start to pick up the theme here that regardless of whether it's a near device or a distance device, field of view is in fact a big problem. And the same concept applies with telescopes as applies with all the reading devices. The larger or the higher the power of the telescope, the smaller the field of view. And just as in a clinic we try to give people the lowest possible mag power of magnification for reading purposes, so too do we try to give them the lowest possible power of a telescope. And here's the reason why. This is a slide of what that woman is seeing through that handheld telescope. And then what you immediately notice is that most of your television screen is black. And all you have there is a very small circle, a white area of text. Now, the higher that the power of that telescope gets, the smaller the visual field becomes. Now, here's an example of, uh, of a little girl simply uh, using the telescope, and she's able to view things in the distance. She's able to look at people or look at signs to, she, that she can identify. And when she's doing that, here's the challenge that she has. Again, the small field of view. One of the phrases that I use uh, when I teach, and you'll hear this when I give you that module, is we, what we say to folks is that we guarantee that people will see things. What we won't guarantee is that they will find things. Finding with these telescopes is the challenge. Seeing things is, in fact, quite easy because from our clinical examination, the eye doctor is able to determine with really pretty good precision how much power you need to get 2020 or 2040 visual acuity, which is what's required to see street signs and things like that. But I think you can appreciate from these last two examples that um, looking through the telescope restricts your visual field so much that finding that street sign is the hard part. Seeing the street sign is, in fact, the easy part. Here's an example of a young student using this device in class. And one of the interesting things with using this device in class is that um, historically, children um, who are in classrooms will sit in the back of the class, or excuse me, I'm sorry, they will sit in the front of the class and the teachers typically know, oh, I've got a student with a visual impairment, and they'll, they'll park them right in the front seat so it gives them the best chance to see the material on the board, and then the teacher can then offer them their specialized materials or whatever. Well, the student's going to be using a telescope. In fact, what they'll have to do is sit farther into the back of the room because of the field of view. As you get real close to the, the bullet, uh, to a chalkboard with a telescope, you won't be able to see anything. Students actually have to move in towards the back of the room. So there's a lot of modifications that need to occur if a student is going to be wanting to use a telescope in a classroom. It's not simply a question of learning where to use it. It's, in fact, a question of learning where to sit. Here's simply an example of a student using it to look at a, um, a, um, a, a room number, which is up high up above eye level so that she needs to be able to use the telescope to make that discrimination as to what room that is. So telescopes are typically used for spotting and for spotting things in the distance. Now up to this point we have been discussing handheld telescopes. These are examples of spectacle mounted telescopes. We call these bi-optic telescopes by meaning two. Uh, Optics meaning glasses, two optical systems. And so you have two optical systems in one here. 
And this slide clearly demonstrates how that occurs. The telescopes are up in the top, kind of up above, up near your eyelids or your eyebrows, and the regular eyeglasses are what, what hold it. Um, and that can be your prescription. So they could, the eye doctor could put your regular prescription, the eye doctor could put your regular prescription right in the lower portion, and they can also put your prescription in these telescopes, which um, provide magnification. You might have noticed that that was in fact a binocular uh, unit, meaning you could do it in both eyes. And here's the way that people use these telescopes. I use the phrase, play high society. You can see that these telescopes are resting right above this young woman's eyes. And so what she does is she sticks her nose up in the air and just has her head up a little bit so that she can look underneath those telescopes for walking around, for finding things that she thinks she might have an interest in looking at. And then when there is something that in fact she wants to look at, all she has to do is lower her chin and raise her eyes. And this slide demonstrates that her chin is now lowered. Her eyes are looking through that pair of telescopes and she's able to get magnification. And so it's a really nice way of being able to quickly and easily lower, uh, raise your chin and lower your eyes, look underneath it, and then boom, lower your chin, raise your eyes, and you're looking right through the telescope. So you can go back and forth and back and forth really quite easily to be able to uh, function. Now here's a pair of bioptic telescopes that are set in a very different place. These are set down in an area where you would typically think of as a bifocal, down near your cheekbone. So in the previous set of telescopes, they were up high, now it's down low. This is a pair of telescopes that has been specifically prescribed for near point activities, for reading. In fact, if you look at these telescopes carefully, what you'll notice is that they don't look like they're parallel to each other. They look like they're turned in. And in fact, they are turned in. They are turned in for this gentleman to look at a very precise distance. He was an, at that time was an accountant who wanted to be able to look at spreadsheets. This was before there was a lot of computers around. And he had a fixed distance of about 16 to 17 inches that he wanted to be able to maintain a competitive job. And so he was willing to spend the money to be able to have a highly specialized pair of glasses prescribed for him to be able to do his activity. Those are called surgical telemicroscopes. If you ever look through some of the uh, Time Life books, you ever hear about uh, microscopic surgery, if you see pictures of surgeons, those are the, that's the exact equipment. In fact, we buy it from the same company that surgeons will buy it from, um, called Designs for Vision. The founder of that company, Dr. William Feinblum, was, actually was a famous optometrist who um, uh, specialized in low vision. Um, there weren't enough low vision clients who could afford this equipment. There are a lot of surgeons who could, so he actually started selling equipment that he was designed for low vision patients to surgeons. And so if you ever see pictures of those, that type of equipment, the low vision patient is in fact using the identical type of equipment. Now a lot of people ask, well, how much does some of this stuff cost? And indeed, when you get into the spectacle mounted equipment, it really is much more expensive. A handheld telescope would cost maybe 150 bucks spectacle mounted telescopes, like we were seeing those, that you know, young woman and that uh, middle-aged gentleman, they will range from between $1,000 and $2,000. So if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you need to have a pretty high-end or specialized need. We typically would not fit those on someone who is um, retired, has pretty um, simple needs. They wanna do their checkbook. They wanna be able to um, read letters. They wanna be able to uh, look at their phone bill, their gas bill, those sorts of things, we probably would not put them into a spectacle mounted pair of glasses because their need is not there and financially it might be difficult for them. For, but for people in employment situations, uh, if it can help you maintain a competitive rate of work, uh, we can get people to see things. The problem is getting them to do it at a fast enough rate of speed so that they can be competitive with someone who might be fully sighted. And equipment like that, these spectacle mounted telescopes and telemicroscopes, oftentimes can enable a person to be competitive. And when you're looking at it from the point of view of maintaining your job or making advancements in your job, succeeding in your job, a thousand or two thousand dollars is not as big an investment as you might think. Here's another example of how a person can use one of these spectacle mounted telescopes. This person sitting in a computer. And while there are lots of options at computers, you can get um, all sorts of large print software, and you certainly can do things with adjusting the monitors. 
if you're someone who might be a technical specialist, uh, an IT specialist, you actually might be a troubleshooter. You might have to go to different people's computers. And so you can't have all, everyone's computer set up with large print software, nor can you have their computer uh, uh, set up so that the monitor is at the right working distance for you. But if we put you into a pair of spectacle telemicroscopes, you could go from computer to computer and be quite competitive with that. Now, if a two-lens system is a bioptic, if you think about it, what would you might consider this lens system? Well, this is called a tri-optic. So we have the bioptic telescopes, which are up in the top portion. And then we've got our regular carrier lens, which is essentially your eyeglass prescription. And then in the bottom, we have a specialized type of a bifocal called a button bifocal. That particular system was in fact prescribed for a young gentleman who was in a voc vocational program where he was learning to do things like um, uh, fix electronics, television sets, and those sorts of things. And the struggle that he had was he needed to be able to put his arms inside of a television set to be able to get really small uh, electrical parts out of there and be able to put new parts in. So we gave him the telescope that was set for a distance of about 16 inches and it magnified there. But then his problem was he needed to also be able to look at instructions and manuals. And he wanted to be able to do that with more magnification. So we gave him this specialized button bifocal. So he'd be able to pick up his manual and look real closely at the manual be able to read the instructions. Then with the telescopes, he'd be able to get his arms inside of the television set or any other electrical equipment he was working on and be able to um, do the work he needed at that distance. So there are thousands of options which are available to the uh, knowledgeable uh, practitioner, specialist, low vision specialist, or eye care specialist who does low vision. And the, the trioptic is simply one of many of those options. I'm just going to run you real quickly here through a couple of these more uh, fancy options of some of the new designs that we have. On the uh, on your left side here, we've got a, a telescope, and on the right side, we've got one of those button bifocals. This would be for a person who might have um, equal vision in both eyes, and they can have a choice. They can uh, try to do everything with one eye, or they can split it and do real, the near point magnification with one eye and the uh, distance magnification with the other. This is all based upon a person's need or a person's interests. So on this side, we've got a person who chose to have telescopes in both eyes, and they chose to have them in a superior mount. On this other side, we have what we had just described, the person who chose to have a center-mounted telescope and a specialized lower visual field bifocal. Why? All based upon their needs and their preferences. So we can really be highly individualized in prescribing these things. This is a type of a telescope called an Ocutech, and this is an autofocus telescope. And it looks kind of like a, a big Oreo cookie sitting up along the top of the pair of glasses. Um, the advantage of a telescope like this is that um, it does provide with autofocus. It's got a little infrared based system in it that allows the clinician, or excuse me, allows the patient to simply uh, zoom in on something and automatically get it in focus. Now here's a gentleman using a superior mounted bioptic telescope, one that we are quite familiar with at this point in time. And the question that I have for you is, what is it that you think this gentleman is doing? Now in fact, you have no information that will help you answer that question, but what I'll say to you is that um, you're going to be surprised when you see what it is that this gentleman is doing. In fact, you're allowed to do this in approximately 31 to 34 states in our country. You are allowed to be low vision and to drive a car. Um, driving is a state's rights issue, so every state has their own laws about how this occurs. I can tell you that, for example, in the state of Texas and in the state of Virginia, you can have 2200 visual acuity, which as you know is legal blindness. You can be legally blind in the state of Virginia or in the state of Texas, to name a few, and drive legally with a bioptic telescope. There are other states, for example, Pennsylvania, that does not allow driving with bioptic telescopes at all. And then there are all the states in the uh, kind of the mushy middle. In my own particular state of Maryland, you're allowed to drive with 2100 visual acuity with or without bioptic telescopes. So the moral of the story here is that, in fact, you can drive um, with telescopes, you can drive with low vision, actually all the way up to being legally blind and to do that safely in many states in our country. This concludes our module on um, introduction to optical devices.